Phew. Day five at Edgbaston. <laughs> this is Ask George. Right, question number one comes from Josh Caswell, who says, how many runs are too many? This is gloriously mad. Well, he's right, and I don't know the answer. Uh, I mean, Ben Stokes has been saying that uh, he kind of wishes India scored a few more, so England could have been <laughs> tested. And it didn't sound arrogant when he said it, did it? It didn't. It, uh, I don't think he meant it to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that was a lot of runs, and they did it with quite a lot of ease and a lot of time left. Who knows where this ends? Danny asks, do they call it test cricket because it's so easy? I mean, I think you would have to say that quite a few things have to fall in place for, for these chases to happen. You know how England's white ball cricket has become quite reliant on good wickets, good batting surfaces? Well, it's a little bit similar here. You've had four unusually good wickets for England uh, uh, over the last few years anyway. The ball hasn't done a lot. And you've seen them basically demonstrate their white ball skills. Uh, very much in the way that, you know, you see Jason Roy and Johnny Bairstow do that at the start of white ball innings. So, you know, quite a lot has to happen for it to work out, and it has done, I suppose. Uh, but, you know, and the pitches haven't deteriorated, have they, in any of these games? Not really, anyway. Um, but yeah, I can't even remember what the question was. It's, uh, <laughs> is it just easy? Is Test cricket easy? Well, it's moment? definitely not. It's not easy. I mean, the funny thing is... Uh, <laughs> What, what did uh, Ben Stokes say? Something along the, line, the lines of, we'll come up against better teams, I mean, including India here, uh, but not braver teams. And, and there have been quite big portions of this game where England were outplayed. And actually didn't even play very well on, was it the second day? Uh, and yet they win. I, I, I'm sort of toying with the idea of thinking that, like, that they're, it's like a Bond plot. Bond finds himself about to be cut up by a laser chuckles, gets out of it and saves the world. So, yeah, they, I mean, the whole way through this game, there was a sense that you can't write England off because something extraordinary is going to happen, and it did. And I don't know whether it's a sensible game plan that requires a miracle, because they keep producing miracles. Do you think it's different when they bat first? At some point, well, they're going to have to bat first. Who knows? <laughs> who the hell knows? I mean, batting should be easier first. It's meant to get harder as the wicket wears. And, and it... There was some irregular bounce on day three or four, and then there wasn't on day five. That's unusual too. Uh, but I don't know, they hit the bowlers off their lengths, didn't they? There's no doubt about that. Uh, England, India certainly were rattled. I wonder what other teams are thinking, you know, whether they're looking at the way New Zealand and India have been rattled by the way England have played, and whether they've been sucked into playing England's style of cricket. I think, um, I went to the poker, sort of training night once. Well, I won it. Well, our friend won it and, and invited me along. And um, good poker players, like, they fold more than half the time, yeah? I think maybe that's how you beat England. You don't get sucked in. On the fourth day, India's bat batters got sucked in to play in the way Ben Stokes wanted them to play. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, and Pan too, I know he's out to leech, but uh, maybe if they'd been prepared to got to dare to be dull sometimes. What about the fields? Uh, th a team's going to have to change the way they set up a field. I've got more sympathy for that. You know, Boomer is going to get some criticism for the fields. Bloody hard to set a field, Joe Root in particular, in any form, because of the, his ability to manoeuvre the ball around. And very hard to set a field to Johnny Bairstow when he's hitting it as he is at the moment. You know, flat wickets, soft balls, very confident batters. You know, I don't know exactly what you do because I thought if you put the field out, they keep playing the shots and you might get them caught. It's not a ridiculous thing to have done, but actually they just picked up single after single and loved the fact that there were holes in the field, which was real smart cricket. That's the thing, actually, England started to play much more percentage cricket uh, as the game on, uh, wore on because they could, because, because they broke the back of that run chase really with the openers. The way the openers played rattled India in a way that you don't see good test teams rattled that often. And maybe a, a, a better captain more experienced captain, maybe, you know, you've got to look at the role of Virat maybe, I, I, I don't know that he, he sort of G's them up, which is fine. Maybe they need someone a bit calmer, a bit smarter out there, and as an experienced player, I think he could have helped in that way. Instead, I think he was as guilty as any of them for being sucked into the way England wanted them to play. 
uh, innocent bystanders back. You know. If Joe Root goes a test without scoring a century, is that a sign of the forthcoming apocalypse? <sighs> you know, you know, you tell me. I mean, you know, I, I think it's fair to say makes a living gambling on cricket. And how the hell you gamble on this England side? I don't know, because uh, they're so unpredictable. I would have thought it made it a lot more difficult. Uh, and uh, I don't see him making a lot of money back in the draw anymore. Um, you know, Joe Root went through the ashes without a hundred. Didn't feel like the apocalypse exactly. It wasn't a particularly happy time, but yeah, he's obviously a, a very fine player in, in, uh, who's gone to a different level, uh, has added the ingredient that he required, which I think was just greed. Gary Munro asks, Root indicated that they use the light roller, you're gonna be getting excited now, that they use the light roller to keep life in the pitch. <laughs> Talk the dirty to me, yeah, <laughs> go on. Okay, yeah. Do you agree with that? And um, will we see it more if England keep wanting to chase? Well, we talked about this yesterday, if, uh, and I don't want to repeat myself, <laughs> but I've been doing it for years, what are you talking about? Uh, I don't know that it worked, actually. I thought using the heavy one worked. Uh, you, you know, you don't want to be, try and be too cute with the game, do you? You don't want to get into a position where you're actually... It was England's choice not to use it before the second innings. It's not England's choice before the third innings, and I think India did use the heavy one, actually. Uh, so I don't think that you're necessarily... I don't think the heavy roller makes a difference for hours and hours and hours. I think it makes a difference for an hour and a half or so, maybe an hour. So I don't know that not using it ahead of them batting in the second innings is going to have made a difference by, it comes to the, to, by the time it comes to the fourth and fifth days. No, I don't. So, uh, but, you know, just to, to reiterate what I said yesterday, I think they used the light one in the first innings because they wanted the pace coming on. I think that's slightly hubristic. I still do. And they used the heavy one in the fourth innings to kill the pitch and just make sure that that key period which is shorter than ever with the new ball and the fresh bowlers uh, any advantage to India was minimised I thought I was smart and you saw the openers really enjoyed it Joshua Owen asks after failing to get a century in Australia I believe George said that Joe Root is a good batsman not a great one does he still think this yeah I, 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 that doesn't sound I stand to be corrected you know you guys will be able to find videos of that but uh, it doesn't quite ring true to me but um, you know, sh show me. I, I don't remember. Um, if you mean is he as good as Bradman or Lara, well, maybe not. He's definitely a great of English batting. Uh, one criteria is judging by something like that. Another criteria is judging fourth innings runs. Well, he's nailed that this summer. He had never scored a fourth inning century before this summer. He's done it twice now to win games against good sides. I think you, you, you'd be struggling to argue that uh, Joe Root wasn't a great player and I, I'd be disappointed if I had ever said that. But, uh, you know, no doubt you'll find a cliff and uh, we can talk again. Hup says, so was the real problem all along that England weren't playing red ball cricket like they play white ball? Yeah, well, we sort of talked about this earlier, didn't we? Uh, uh, up to a point, you know, yes because they're really good at the white ball thing and it plays to their strengths. But you do have to have a few things fall into place. This, this is not, I hope, uh, detracting from anything they've done. It's certainly not meant to. But you know, it, it, England's white ball cricket is at its best on, on those flat wickets where you know, they can score 400. In fact, it started here, didn't it? Do you remember the game against New Zealand in whatever it was, May 2015? And uh, you probably need as I say, uh, balls that don't move a lot laterally and pitches where the, the, it comes on and you know, run scoring is fairly easy for that to work and England are really, really good at that. It's interesting, it's sort of an un-English way of playing. For years England used home advantage which consisted of playing the moving ball and bowling the moving ball uh, better than their opposition and that's changing. Six weeks now we've got before the next one. Yeah. You're going to miss it? You're going to have a lie down? Uh, well, there's still lots of cricket. I mean, I think it's uh, it's less than 48 hours until I do another game, <laughs> so uh, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So um, I don't know if I'll miss it. <laughs> we don't have a chance to. Uh, no, it's been a massive amount of fun. Uh, it, it is. It's always been fun, you know, even on the bad days. Uh, but it has been a bit special, and not knowing exactly what's going on is absolutely fine. It's been a lot of fun and uh, you know some of these guys they're, they're good guys who've had a hard time so it's nice to see them uh, flourishing. I mean, Johnny Bairstow for example it looked like his test career was coming to a sort of 
an early close, didn't it, without him having completely fulfilled his ability, and I thought that wasn't entirely his fault. So it's really nice to see him have this period where he, he looks magnificent. Uh, Joe Root's obviously been a, a really good guy. He was a fantastic captain of England in lots of ways, you know. He, honestly, for those of us who deal with him all the time, he was such a good role model, such a good person. Maybe, maybe in a way, it didn't always come over, but I, I, I don't know, I hope it did. And obviously he's a fantastic batter. And Ben Stokes is an inspirational figure who, uh, who you know, I think there's a lot to like about him. Uh, and I always, I always have thought that, so it's really nice to see what they're doing. The other thing is, we talk about cricket needing a strong Pakistan, a strong West Indies, uh, Test cricket needing those teams to be strong. It needs a strong England. It's very, very important that uh, England is a strong Test side because there's still a lot of support here. There's still a lot of money here, there's still a lot of interest here. Uh, and if that died away, I think the format of the game would be weakened and compromised in the long term. So, uh, the, whichever way you look at it, really, even as an India supporter, even as a New Zealand supporter, and I am sort of a New Zealand supporter, there, you would like to think that uh, this is kind of good for the game. England are playing really entertaining cricket. And uh, they're making something that some people thought was a bit staid and boring seem fun as all hell. And what's not to like about that? So, uh, am I going to miss it? No, because there's lovely other cricket to, to watch in the meantime, but I am looking forward to seeing what happens against South Africa, and it would be really interesting to know what South Africa are thinking now, because I think if they take England on at their own game, I don't know, I, I would be surprised if, if South Africa won it, but they're a good side with lots of good players, who knows.